don't know how to start these ones, but I guess we're just like here talking about Marvel. Yeah, is that the intro we're going for? I guess so. Okay, so Lucas. This is very unfocused. It is, yes. <laughs> So nearby, Carl. Yes. Uh, just we're here today, and mm -hmm. you know, we're recording these all in one go, so people will know with me wearing like the same shirt for all these episodes. Don't but, you know. spoil it. Are you saying we do more than one thing on one day? <laughs> Never. These don't get edited and uploaded on the same day. Weird that. It's almost as if I have to like travel three hours to get here. You do indeed, but uh, today it's uh, another unfocused, isn't it? It's an unfocused conversation about what. Uh, we're going to be talking about just like the MCU, um, kind of, you know, bit of both, doing a bit of a... See, I was thinking that if you, you were going to say one or two things, say comic books, if it was going to be DC, this would have been a lot higher up. Yeah, it would have been. But we'd be Marvel. I'm like, okay, I'll have a little bit. because just I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. Well, what specifically about the MCU? Well, I just thought we could have a, like a bit of, as you say, an unfocused discussion about where we see the MCU at the moment, because like... You know, obviously, there's been ups and downs with like releases of late. You could argue, and like mm -hmm. obviously, um, COVID has had a lot to do with that. And just generally, like, is there any <coughs> Squeeze movies me. of late that don't star Spider Man, yes. or any like things you want to come from the MCU that you, that you might be excited about? Okay, so like, you want to see. I guess to clarify, um, uh, for anyone wondering the date, um, the last Marvel movie to come out was Doctor Strange: Multiverse of Madness, and. So there may be spoilers for any movie, um, up to and including that one. Yeah, like, neither of us have watched anything to do with the Thor movie coming out, so, nope. like, this will just be... If you watch Doctor Strange and everything prior, you're safe. Yes. And then there's, like, obviously there's stuff coming out in the trailers for it, but um, uh, me and you both try and avoid trailers for things that we're interested in as mm -hmm. much as possible. So that includes the She-Hulk TV show and the Thor Love and Thunder movie. I did watch the She-Hulk trailer. You watched the She-Hulk trailer, but I like, couldn't resist. Okay. But besides that, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of an interesting point in time to be a, a fan of these movies. Mm -hmm. Because they're now in what I like to call the fuck it mode. Yes. Where the Marvel Universe has been established to the point where it is just this monolithic, uh, almost incomprehensibly successful part of pop culture where they can do realistically anything they damn well feel like. They can put out the Eternals and make a profit. Yeah. Which says a lot. And even the, like, the Eternals was like poorly received, but it still made money. Yeah. And was still like by all accounts. I watched it, I thought, oh, it's not the best Marvel movie. It's but like a solid 7 out of 10. And that's the thing, yeah, even the worst movies in that series are still pretty good. And that's really that's impressive. Fine, yeah. Like, there are movie franchises with less movies in them where the majority of them are bad. Like, Terminator franchise. Any, like, superhero starred <laughs> movies that... Where the majority are bad. Oh. So that's the thing, like, on paper, like, if you look at, like, the critical and the commercial numbers for the Marvel movies, it is a absolute just unprecedented triumph there is not a single movie franchise that can even approach what the mcu has achieved of having like 20 30 movies all of which have been critically and commercially successful mm -hmm. like commercially successful you could argue like star wars has done it but even then you've got flops like solo that yeah. did quite poorly i don't have people i'm alone um Solo. Literally every single Marvel movie has been a critical and commercial success. Like you can disagree, folks at home, with the quality or how you, how much you like given movies. Yeah, you know, Ball Two was not great. Yeah, but it's still a success, and by the standards of like you know the other movies in the medium, it's pretty good. Yeah, but I'd say like even the worst MCU movie, like the Thor Two, is still more entertaining than near enough any other superhero outing. Um, uh, I definitely still want to watch that than. Like, you know, probably half of what DC's put out mm -hmm. at this point, like modern DC movies. Because at least it stars a character I'm remotely interested in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like actors and performances that I care about. Like, you know, Loki in that movie yeah, he's, has he's... his moments and is really good. Like, and that's what I mean. Like, Malekith does not. Yeah, Malekith <laughs> does not. But if you compare it to, like, say, near enough any other franchise movies, even ones with, like, significantly less in them. Mm -hmm. 
let's go a couple of my favorites, like the Terminator franchise. I don't know how many movies, like Terminator 1, 2, 3, Genesis, Salvation, and then Dark Fate. That's, so that's six movies, two of them are good. So I was going to say four of them are bad, but yeah. yeah. So we have four bad movies. The Alien series, so Alien, Aliens, Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, Prometheus, um, Alien Covenant. And then another six. Also, the two Predator were two were good. Like, I don't count them. Two yeah. were good. But Predator. We got Predator One, Predator Two, Predator Requiem, and Predators. That's four. Two of them are good. Two of them are bad. And that's the thing. Like even like ones where there's less like fifty percent is the best I can hope mm. for. Yeah. And then Marvel movies like ninety five percent of them are you know seven out of tens or above. But they all made money. Still, it's it's ridiculous. It's, it really is. And like you know, you say you were we're in like fuck it mode now mm -hmm. where. Yeah, we can have like this just weirdness that was Multiverse of Madness. And yes, I think the title is a little bit misleading. There's not much multiverse involved. Not like, really. They go to like. It's a bit New tangential. They go to New York. That looks different three times. Yeah, it's just like, oh, look, like here's all of these ones where like people are made out of pain. But we're going to land in New York that's white. Like, right, okay. Got it. Other than that, like, the fact that we can have, like, the Scarlet Witch being, like, a horror villain where, like, America Chavez, who I didn't even know was in the movie, mm -hmm. is, like, travelling through multiverses as, like, Doctor Strange jumps into his dead body from another multiverse yeah. to, like, corral evil spirits from the dead with Sam Raimi's weird direction going on and using them as, like, a cape. To go and fight yeah. her and, yeah. The fact we've got a movie where it ends with a zombie wizard with a cape of ghosts fighting a witch from another universe who's powered by a crystal that was like a big purple alien was trying to get to take over the universe and I 100% sold on the concept. Where I, I look at it and go, that's fine. And they make that a drama piece about like, the struggles of loss. Yeah, losing like sort of grief, uh, a grief-stricken mother who mm -hmm. also happens to have superpowers is like fist fighting um, a, a zombie wizard. Yeah. And you watch it and you're 100% in. You are mm -hmm. sold on the concept regardless of how silly it is, yep. which means that Marvel can realistically do anything they want. And I'm kind of glad that they off the criticism often the levies like never quite formulaic. Mm -hmm. And I really don't agree with that because even if you say like, the Marvel movies, they follow a formula. I will always give them props for, as cynically as they do, highlighting minorities mm. of like Black yeah. Panther and Shang-Chi. It's a black-led movie with black people in front of and behind the camera. Um, a celebration mm -hmm. of uh, black culture. Shang-Chi, same thing with Asian culture and Asian people. And as well, just like how diverse the um, core group of the Eternals were. Yep. Like, that is something that nobody batted an eyelid at. Um, and they've obviously like, they got a bit of flack um, with the whole like gay kiss scene and then like kept it in the movie which is obviously great as well like and they are making and I know someone out there is going to complain like how cynically it's being done but something I've talked about before is that even if it's done cynically it still means now the most successful series of movies of all time has one of them which is entirely black led has one that is entirely um, uh, Asian led just that movie existing means that those Asian people behind and in front of the camera will now be able to get more work. And while it was a cynical move to put them in there, it still like, helps them break into the industry and help. Cynical progress is still progress, yeah. right? Yeah, and like, it's that thing, isn't it? It's like, okay, we'll take what we can get at this point in regards yeah. to a representation of minorities. Mm -hmm. 100%. And you can't really ask for better well, representation uh, than a Marvel movie. <laughs> yeah, the, we had the first... Um, mute character as well like being a main character in a superhero movie yep. and just like again we know like take it all with a grain of salt because like there are a bunch of like knobhead businessmen probably making these decisions for the wrong reason. the guys from the boys yeah, yeah. The, 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 the business people the from the boys yeah. yeah i i haven't done anything yet yeah, exactly. You already have two and a half points with Midwesterners and conservative Christians in 18 to 49. Which we all know happens with this thing, but like, just because it's been done cynically doesn't mean that like, people who are being represented on screen aren't... It still matters to them yes. and the people seeing that representation, yeah. And, like, a look at Doctor oh, Strange as well, like, having America Chavez, like, that meant a lot to a lot of, um, a lot of different people and a lot of, like, you know, young women watching that movie and stuff as well, like... And yeah, and it's, it's being done cynically and that's why I always found it 
kind of hilarious that there was that discourse for a, a while. I don't remember what, when it was about like 2019, 2020, I guess when I'm like papers were bored so there was nothing happening mm-hmm. except for like the obvious and it's like they just asked director after director what do you think of the MCU and like oh it's not cinema yeah. like and they you know like Martin Scorsese saying like you know it's pop conflicts they're not trying to do anything new and it's like well, when's the last time you Martin Scorsese directed a movie that had someone who you didn't personally know someone who wasn't Robert De Niro or Al Pacino in it yeah. like yeah but you're still putting like the same seventy-five-year-old actors in your movies all the time and telling the same stories. Like, uh, are you going to cast a movie with Kamala Khan in it? Yeah, are you going to cast a act- TV show? Yeah. But are you going to like cast any Muslim people in your? Are you going to put like Asian people behind? No, he's going to work with people who've worked for for the entire time. He's a fucking dinosaur. Yeah, and that's the thing of like, like it makes great movies, but still, like, yeah. What are you doing to actually push? Like, you might be talking about they're not pushing like the medium forward. They're not um, uh, like challenging. Like the, the medium as a whole. I'd he's say they are. He's not pushing the industry forward. Yeah. yeah. And I say like in one way they're not, but in another they absolutely 100% are. It's a weird thing of like they're using it for, you know, great reasons like that, but also it means that you can get away with silly shit where like, yeah, Sam Raimi's got like a half horror movie going on in the middle of the MCU where like Scarlet Witch deletes Black Bolt's mouth and makes him blow himself up. Like, yeah. You get the weird shit in it as well and like that's what like comic book movies probably should be aiming for is like okay not that every comic book movie has to be silly and comic booky and over the top but like what other movies get to have that excuse to do so and also so what other movies have the inbuilt excuse to have like just so much diversity by default because how many comic characters exist because they were designed to fill a niche in the comic reading audience yeah. like characters like black panther created oh well, well with loads of like little black kids reading our comic books there was no black superheroes like put a black superhero oh. in there so they can read them now let's make a movie with them and so now like yeah um i was gonna say or similarly like the writers um being like well i've not been represented in comic books before let's create a character that represents me or yeah. my race or whatever have you and yeah it's like and it's great for us even though like you know we're you know, that representation doesn't matter, quote unquote. I don't like using that word, but you know, it doesn't us. apply to us, it does matter to us. But, okay, I was trying to think of the right way to word that, but I still get interesting movies told from a perspective I maybe didn't consider. Uh, you know what? I've been represented enough yeah. in media as like, but also as well, yeah. you know, a white cis dude, like, you know. How many directors in of movies are exactly that? Mm-hmm. When do I ever get to see, like, and there's probably someone out there saying, like, oh, there's plenty of indie movies and stuff. Okay, yeah, there is. How many blockbusters mm-hmm. per year are directed by black people? Or women, or whatever. You know, yeah. whatever. That, that's the thing. And it's, like, when you, all you do is go look at the Oscars every single year, like, oh, director of the year, and it's just like five fucking white dudes. Mm-hmm. Best actor, five fucking white dudes. Best actress, five fucking white dudes. Like. Yeah. And it's like, even though it's done it's be done cynically, but because blockbusters are such a big part of pop culture, it's like, you know, it's called pop culture for a reason, it's popular. Mm-hmm. It's the thing that, you know, the average man, woman, and child on the street. I thought it stood for like popcorn culture. <laughs> that's what Martin's going to say, he thinks. Like, yeah, that's what he thinks, yeah. Popcorn culture. Just, like, yes, it we're says Manny saying... who only puts white people in his movies. We're not saying that every fucking movie has to be like Citizen Kane or The Godfather Part 2 or whatever. Sometimes we want to just have dumb fun. And that's uh, even if you don't think they have, like, even I saw Martin Scott say, we're probably dunking on him a bit, but fuck him. But he dunked on the MCU yeah. pretty hard. So. And it's that thing of like, if you don't think it has value, like just go to all like, just any of those interviews with um, uh, Chadwick Boseman before he passed. Mm-hmm. Of when he talks about like every black person he meets is like just over the moon to talk to him of like, you are, you li- like I've never seen. You are a superhero. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what that meant to people and to say that doesn't have value like when he says that he can't leave the house without people being like Wakanda forever yeah, like, yeah. that matters to people whether yeah. or not those people are old you know white dudes being it's... directors and being cynical about the, um, the the Marvel movies like it does matter to say that doesn't have value as well he's incredibly dismissive and he's spoken from a position of like absolute privilege of yeah you've never had to worry about yourself being represented on screen. So you have no idea of how much just like these silly popcorn movies mean to people when they have themselves represented on screen, like someone like America Chavez mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And because they've now, I guess, earned, they've put enough of those like movies outside those white dudes. They've, like, they've put enough 
films out with white dudes called They've Chris in them. Chris Pratt out yeah. there to, to solidify them. Yeah, there are enough yeah. Marvel movies with white dudes called Chris leading them that they <laughs> can basically do whatever the fuck they want, and that is really... It's exciting. It is. Yeah. I'm curious to see where they go with it, and something we've talked about is like, the X-Men. That's, yeah. that's got to be the next big thing. It's like, we want the X-Men, like uh, Professor X and uh, uh, Magnus to be black. Look, again, you know, we're more obviously talking spoilers here. I'm glad that we got Patrick Stewart. I'm glad that cameo exists. Keep it as a cameo. Like he's a he's an old guy. He can't be. He can't I don't want to be in hamstrung to MCU movies for like till he's fucking dead and then replaced by a we don't want Richard CGI Harris. double like dear God. We don't need um, a Professor X getting Richard Harris from Richard Harris. Harris. His original actually played Dumbledore. Oh, because they swapped him out halfway yeah. through for Michael Gambon. Yeah. Because he was old and he didn't want to do it. And so his granddaughter was like, do it or I'll never speak to you again. And then he did it and he <laughs> fucking died. But yeah, like, um, like just like for people maybe don't remember that video, we didn't watch it, of like our idea for the MCU to bring in the X-Men. Of make it, because, you know, guess what? They're not all in 2026 or wherever the MCU's set now. I think like five years ahead of us or four years ahead mm-hmm. of us or something in 26, 27. Like... World War Two is going to make it so that those ten-year-old like kids like Magneto going through World War Two, he'd be nearly a hundred. Mm-hmm. Like instead, you know, modernize it a little bit and base it within the um, the civil rights movement. Yeah, and the thing we mentioned in the video is for any because there's always a weirdo out there, but you can't do that. Is the X Men comic books were directly inspired by the civil rights movement, mm-hmm. uh, which was like you know. Um, very big um, around the 1960s and it's something Stanley was keenly aware of and also the characters of Magneto and Professor X are directly inspired by Martin Luther King and Malcolm X which is pretty obvious when like Dr. Martin Luther King Malcolm X Professor Charles Xavier Magneto all the way around but yeah because he's but, Professor no, he's X he's called you know, Professor X is like you know Malcolm X and Dr. Martin Luther King to represent that but then like they're conflicting ideals of representative yeah, of yeah, yeah. The, t- the conflicting ideals of uh, Malcolm X and uh, I thought you were Lion trying King. to say like um, oh, it's just it's, it's really obvious when you have it there yeah. of like just the name Professor X is like a combination of Dr. Martin Luther mm-hmm. King and Malcolm X and so and to just, make them black is more true to the original inspiration for the stories yeah and as well like it's quite obvious to see that you know a big part of a lot of the X-Men storylines when it's more grounded and not cosmic stuff and shit like it's about the segregation of, mutant of mutants and whether they deserve to be treated like other human beings. And like, they get like, you know, oh, the mutants, are, you know, they're separate but equal or they've got to go to different schools. It's like, it's so obvious what the inspiration is. Like, it's so on the nose. But like, why not lean it? If you, yeah. Rather than just like, you know, pay lip service to it, actually address it. And there's going to be someone out there who's, there always is. Magneto's past is intrinsically tied to being a Holocaust survivor. No, it's not. In the original comics, Magneto had no setback story. They added in him being a Holocaust survivor to make him more sympathetic. Then they retconned it when it became part of the Illuminati because they realized the Jewish, like the, the, only, the only major Jewish character they had was an evil dude trying to kill people. And also being part of the Illuminati, trying to take over the world, was like, drew those unfortunate parallels, those awful racist conspiracy theories. Then they retconned him to be Jewish again. So they've retconned his backstory to make him like a Holocaust survivor and then not a Holocaust survivor. And if you want to be on those weirdo purists, like you can't abandon someone's like character the way it was originally written. In which case, he shouldn't be from World War II mm-hmm. because that was something added after the fact. Yeah, and just I'd love to see X Men come back. Um, I'm sure we could talk all day about like you know fan castings and stuff like well, that. I've got a few. You got you got an idea for a fan casting? Because there is one I wanted to mention that I discovered recently. Okay. Okay, so um, uh, Wolverine is probably the big one. Wolverine's like the big character everybody wants. Okay, so I've seen like, you know, him shutting them down, but also seen rumors like Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe is a popular choice, yes. And there's he's, all. He's said he, many times that he hasn't been reached out about that, but obviously whether they'll say it or not. Yeah, and there's a couple of things like Wolverine, like they want it to be short, like fans want it to be short, um, and they want it to be Canadian, they want it to be buff as fuck. Yeah, because like it doesn't make sense when you look at Wolverine and the comics, and then you've got like Australian six foot three Jack Man, like huge Jack Man. Yeah, huge Jack Man. Yeah, huge Jack Man is what I was trying to like so slip in there. But yeah, he's 
you know, five foot three or something in the in comics, the comics. And, and he's like a tiny feral buff dude. Yeah, that's why he's called the Wolverine. Mm-hmm. And a, a casting that was kind of out of left field for me that I was made aware of watching Better Call Saul is Michael Mandel. Which, um... Nacho Varga in Better like, Call Saul and You could Boss. make the argument he's like technically a character in the MCU, but he's in like the end credits of Homecoming. And he is. They've had a couple of people that have been cast twice. So. Yeah. But he's short, he's Canadian, and he's buff as fuck. Mm-hmm. And there's like, he's like acknowledged that thing of him as like, yeah, I'd love to play you know, the, the, one of the most famous Canadian superheroes. Yeah. So I saw that one of like, so any like fan castings that you're particularly fond of or I would like to, I know, state your claim. Because I think the ones we mentioned, why I ever think for Magneto and Professor mm-hmm. X was Magneto, Giancarlo Esposito. Yeah. Why? Well, because he's just got such presence, and I can imagine him being like in that outfit, delivering those like you know megalomaniac speeches. And then for Professor X, Lance Reddick. Yeah, yeah. Because we had the discussion of like, well, realistically, Professor X only has to be have one trait, and that is he has to look good bald. <laughs> Which that's Lance Reddick does yeah. to a fucking team. And that's the thing. Like the only, and that's why. Like, uh, and people are thinking that's a bit like you know reductive. And uh, part of the reason that James McAvoy was cast is because he looked good bald. Because oh, they, really? Yeah, and he shaved his head initially because he thought he had to be bald. I'm like, no, you're going to lose your hair. There's a plot point. It's a plot <laughs> point in that way that he loses his hair. But it's like he's literally part of the casting process that the actor looks good bald. Mm. So that's the only real thing that matters in terms of like, the look. And I think Lance Reddick looks exactly like Professor X. Yeah. No, like, it's hard because I'm not only trying to like think while listening to you. Mm-hmm. I'm also trying to think who the fuck hasn't been cast in the MCU anymore. Yeah, well, there's a few characters that you know we know there's going to be a Fantastic Four movie. Yeah, and we have now Jim from The Office is playing it, which I hope does continue, if only because his wife in real life, um, Emily Blunt, oh yeah, would be great as Sue Storm, and then you'd have that like yeah. dynamic, and then imagine like you know them bringing that dynamic to the stage. If it's a real world husband and wife playing a you know husband and wife on film, mm-hmm. like, the chemistry is going to be amazing. Yeah. Which is what you need from like Mr. Fantastic and Susan Storm. You need that like family dynamic there. Yeah, and like um... and then you could have Dwight Schrute. It's like Rain. <laughs> no, because then you could have Rain Wilson as um, the thing. I was, I was gonna say I was Benjamin Grimm. Yeah. So all you need to do is do the voice. Mm. And I know from watching Super again that he can do the gruff persona. He kind of can. Yeah. yeah. Like, in a bit of a dorky way, but you could pull it off. Can you not, like... I was going to say that. I rewatched that movie recently, and I love that. It's like, I need a signature weapon, and he just gets a fucking wrench. Oh, he yeah. just beats people with a wrench. And his catchphrase is, shut up, crime. Oh, God. Because wasn't that a James Gunn movie? No, it was a James Gunn movie, yeah. yeah. Oh, so. so if anyone else wants to watch, like, a superhero James Gunn movie that wasn't, you know, Guardians or Suicide Squad. Go watch Super. It's also got Kevin Bacon in it. Does it? It's got Kevin Bacon and Elliot Page. Yeah, it's more like Kick-Ass See, where they've not actually, like, got power. Yeah, but, but you've like, got, like, um, Kevin Bacon in it. He was in um, the X-Men movies, Elliot Super Page. Yeah. So that's... Um, Shadowcat. Shadowcat, yes. Yeah. They played Shadowcat, didn't they? So you've, like, you've already got some superhero connections there. So, like, you know, give Rain Wilson his chance. Mm, yeah. That's you no, know, that's me just like you know doing a jokey one, but just thinking. Like, I reckon any actor could play him. Because... I wouldn't mind um, seeing Millie Bobby Brown as Shadowcat. That could be quite good, like for the younger X Men. Because you... like Kitty Pryde's normally like one of the younger cast, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Because there's a couple of them where you don't really need to do anything; they just need to have a specific look. Like Wolverine, whoever plays Wolverine, needs to be short and like grow a good beard. Mm-hmm. Like, Professor X needs to be, like, well-spoken and be bald. Yeah. Like, Shadow Cat needs to be quite lithe and, um, uh, you know, be a, have a youthful face because, I like, know, they're young in the comics and, and like... Um, and obviously they're not always young in the comics. Like, there's many, many comics. But if you want to cast those, like, you know, iconic X-Men characters... That's the thing is, because, like, X-Men specifically, I think you'd have to be sensible about it and you'd have to be peaking, picking people or actors, sorry, that are... Young enough to carry Young 10 enough years. Young enough that are like, yeah, teens at this point being recruited into the X-Men. So like, it's, it's I think quite tough with the X-Men because I don't think it, it's necessarily the best idea to lean on like, you know, Hugh Jackman and James Marsden and people like that. And they were like relatively young, but they weren't 
you know, teenagers back mm-hmm. then. Which is what like, a lot of those X-Men stories act like they're coming of age stories, aren't they? So you need obviously those older established actors. And like, like you can you can have the professors. They're like the not professors are they? They're just teachers. Mm-hmm. Um, you can obviously have like a mix of like the younger and older cast. You can have like an older, more established actor. And that's why I feel like Cyclops to bring James Marsden back. He, I he's, wouldn't even be mad about he's it. He's sick of talking to Sonic. <laughs> you can bring them all back, really. Because like, there's how many actors are actually left to be cast in those movies? That's the that's the difficult part, isn't it? Isn't there's like, no like more established, which is why I like those MCU movies where. Like, oh, here's an actress or actor you've never heard of in a role. And you're like, wow, they were really good. Like, similar you. He was, like, literally yeah. doing stock photos. Well, I think he was in Kim's Convenience just before. Like, you, know, a, like, you know, a small, relatively popular sitcom, well, you know, compared to a Marvel movie. Yeah. And now he's, like, a fucking movie star. Mm-hmm. I did love him dunking on people using his own stock photos. Though. Yeah. <laughs> like, that That's the thing. Like, he was, like, you know, posing for stock photos and stuff, and now he's, like, mm-hmm. one of the biggest movie stars on Earth. Like yeah. these movies are king makers. They're going to shape the next 20, 30 years of cinema. And it's so exciting and interesting that they're like, you know, putting so, minority actors to the forefront. Not necessarily t- talking about actors now. Okay. Is there not X Men, not Fantastic okay. Four, like those obvious picks? Are there, is there like a, a storyline, a team, like anything that you can think of Marvel wise that like's not been hit on yet in the MCU that you'd love to see? <sighs> it's just the street level stuff. And we've we've talked about it to death in like all the other content we've made of, I want the street level stuff to stop tr- being so important. And I mean important in the sense like the universe, like the She-Hulk TV show coming out, it's gonna end with a big CGI fight and it's gonna be like, you know, leading into a movie. Why can't we just have Law and Order? Yeah. Why can't we just have Law and Order in the Marvel universe? Like, like a show like um, Damage Control. Mm, yeah. Damage Control are established. Like, just a show, like, do you know what Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., what I thought it was going to be, until again, it has to lead into all the movies? Mm-hmm. Just, like, the X-Files in the, um, <laughs> which is what I thought, yeah, that's why I thought Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was going to, what it was for a bit, and then they make it into this huge overarching story that affects the entire world. It's like, just solving mysteries and shit in the MCU. That'd be so fun. It would be. I'd love to, like, as well, like, I know that it's been kind of set up, but I really, in a similar fashion, want to see Spider-Man get back to Spider-Man. Like that's kind of what Noah him. Like I fucking love Noah. That'd be great for a TV was. show. But the, Imagine the just idea like... that they set up him as like resetting his life, going for a more classic style suit, just like I'm on my own. I'm Peter Parker. Like let's get back to just street level heroing. Like just... that'd be great for a TV show as well. It's like but obviously it wouldn't because of the, the, budget, the budget, I guess. But like yeah. to get Tom Holland back in for all that, so which is why I like just. And you're never going to get like a 20 episode thing because they're all got to be like short events. Mm-hmm. But I, I would just love like an episodic show like in the vein of X-Files or Law and Order or one of those like, you know, procedurals. That's like, you know, there's an overarching story for a season. But like throughout that, you have a couple episodes of levity and just like Monsters of the Week stuff. Yeah. Which, you know, is perfect for that. So there's so many jobber heroes and you can have so many like, excuses for cameos or big actors to come in and just do like a one-off role. I'd like to see... Normal uh, scenery. Yeah, some of those like wacky C-tier villains come out. And yeah, and you, could, and you could get like those like really established actors that you're never going to get in for an entire season to do stuff People like that. People don't want to commit to 10 years worth of movies. And stuff. Yeah, you know, give all those like actors who've got like amazing range and stuff. Like get a John Lithgow in or something to do like a, I don't know, mm. play like fucking, we've, got, we've already got the Vulture now, but I don't know, I try to think of like a C-tier villain that you could do. Like Stilt Man or something like that. <laughs> like just bring like a super established actor in to do like yeah. some crate, like stupid role, like enormous scenery for a bit. Let the actors have fun and then maybe do something with it in the future. But and um, before the camera stops recording, I just yes. want to also mention like you've set it up to happen, but fucking make sure that John Bernthal comes back as Punisher. Yes, please. Like you've got Charlie Cox, you've got Vincent D'Onofrio, John Bernthal. Just let like. Monster of the Week episode, and every episode ends with the Punisher shooting someone in the back of the head. And then one of them just happens to be like Jared Lowe as Morbius. Yes. <laughs> just end him. 